We'll round out the first half of our program with a writer who was born in Taiwan and immigrated to Lincoln, Nebraska, where he grew up as one of approximately five Asian kids in the state. <laughs> Eventually, he ended up in Chicago, where he became a kung fu master and gymnast, a former stuntman, and a member of the Screen Actors Guild. He's also a contributing writer for the magazine Famous Monsters of Filmland. His debut novel, The Lives of Dao, Tao, sorry, uh, hits bookstores, bookstore shelves on April 30th. Please welcome to our microphone, Wesley Chu. Um, thanks, everyone, for being here. My name is Wesley Chu. My debut novel, The Lives of Tao, <laughs> is dropping April 30th, so uh, please keep an eye for it. So let's rock this party. Um, the scene I'm going to read for you is from the book, and in this scene, the main character, Rowan Tan, has just been inhabited by an alien, and he doesn't know it yet. So this is the scene where they first interact. It was well past 10 p.m. by the time Rowan left the office. Heels dragging, he trudged out of the building and made that lonely walk to the parking garage six blocks away. The clouds were out in full force tonight, common this time of year, and a stiff breeze blew in from the lake. He picked up the pace and continued south on Wabash, hearing the rumblings of the train as it passed nearby. Now, Rowan had the option of parking closer to the Grant Park garage, but parking there cost 30 bucks. That's like two pizzas. <laughs> so he was resigned to making that long trek to the further away but cheaper garage. Suddenly, his highly attuned sense of self-preservation began to let him know that it wasn't happy. Something didn't feel right. This part of the loop was poorly lit and a little rough, so he fidgeted as his eyes started up and down the street. It was deserted except for a homeless guy crossing the intersection, and there was no one behind him either. Then the homeless guy changed directions and moved onto an intercept course. Rowan sighed. He had learned to always keep a few dollar bills on him to give to beggars. It was the easiest way to get rid of them. He handed a buck over before the guy even said a word. Here you go, Rowan said, and tried to walk around him. Thanks, boss, the homeless guy replied, shifting to his left to block Rowan's path. Look, man, I'm hungry. Dollar ain't gonna buy much. Let me get a few more for a meal. He stepped in really close. Rowan smelled the faint traces of liquor and the stale aroma of unwashed clothing. Sorry, Rowan mumbled and tried to pass him again. The homeless guy became more insistent and continued to block his path. Hey, back off, Rowan stuttered, throwing his hands out to keep the guy at arm's length. Then the homeless guy growled. Why you gotta push me? I'm just asking for a few bucks to eat. Then the homeless guy shoved Rowan hard, causing him to stumble a few steps. Not one for confrontation, Rowan turned into a side alley and immediately regretted his decision. <laughs> Alleys were where bad things happen, and he just did the exact thing that the idiot sort of a guy to the city would tell him not to do. <laughs> it was a dead end. So he turned around, and he faced the homeless guy, slowly retreating. All right, how much you need for a meal? The homeless guy grinned. Price just went up, boss. You gone hurt my feelings. <laughs> then he became a mugger as he pulled out a knife. It's gonna cost you your cash, your train pass, that bag you're carrying. Hell, everything you got. Roland felt that rising panic climbing up his throat as he stumbled backward. How did he get himself into these situations? Damn you, work. <laughs> Look, he stammered, barely getting the words out. The fuck is over. I can give you my money, but this is my work bag. I need the stuff in it, I'll get in trouble. You don't think you're in trouble now? <laughs> this is negotiations, asshole. <laughs> Tell him he can have the money, but you are keeping your bag. Roman looked confused. What did you say? What's wrong with you, boss? God, you're dumb. Give me your stuff or I stick you. Rowan retreated until his back bumped up against the dumpster and he began to hyperventilate. What kind of a mugger uses a knife? It's almost insulting. <laughs> Listen carefully. There are some wine bottles at your feet. 
pick them up. Who said that? What's going on, Lauren cried. Your feet. Bottles. Pick them up. Now! The mugger advanced. I'm losing my patience with you, Tubby. You're going to be a fat dead man any minute. <laughs> Ruben looked down at the ground and saw several empty wine bottles. He picked up one in each hand and he brandished them in front of him. <laughs> Hold them by the neck. The neck. The skinny part. Rowan hastily switched his grip. Stay back, he warned. The mother paid him no attention and continued to advance. He was no further than a few feet away now. Break the bottles in front of you. Break the bottles and wheel them in front of you. For a split second, Rowan saw an image of a black armored gladiator standing in an arena holding two swords, one held high over his head and the other in front of his chest. He didn't know what was going on or, or who was talking, but he was so scared right now, he did whatever that voice said. He took the two bottles and he smashed them together. Thunk. <laughs> they didn't break. <laughs> What the? Rowan looked down and tried again. Thunk! Thunk! <laughs> the damn bottles wouldn't break. Oh, for the love of Rowan guarded this heat, and he tried even harder. Thunk! Finally, they shattered into two jagged shards that he waved in front of him triumphantly, trying to imitate that already fading image of the gladiator. Good. Say something mean. <laughs> <laughs> what? Threatened him. You, you give me all your money, Rowan cried. <laughs> <laughs> that is not what I meant. <laughs> the mother did a double take. What? I'm robbing you. You give me all your money. <laughs> not anymore, Rowan cried. I'm robbing you. <laughs> <laughs> you can't rob me. That's not how it works. <laughs> The mugger no longer seemed so sure of himself and retreated a few steps. The two stood very, very far apart, both harmlessly waving their respective weapons. <laughs> every time the mugger advanced, Rowan scampered backward, and every time Rowan crept forward, the mugger retreated. The back and forth continued on as they swore at each other. <laughs> Come on, you fat asshole, the mugger snarled. You're a jerk and you stink, Rowan answered. <laughs> Attack. Rowan's eyes started around the alley. Is, is my brain trying to get me killed? <laughs> Bullies are cowards. Attack. Nearly a minute into their standoff, after a lot of bravado on both sides, something in Rowan snapped. With a burst of momentary courage and a high-pitched squeal of a raging mouse, he <laughs> swung the broken bottles above his head and he charged. The mugger seemed to finally have had enough and fled. Rowan chased him for about 20 feet before that physical exertion wore him out. He stopped and bent over, panting. Good. You did well. Let him go. Go home. Who is this? Rowan gasped, sucking in large gulps of air. But the voice was silent. Afraid that the mugger would come back, Rowan hustled as fast as he could to his car and drove home. He stepped through the front door shortly after 11 p.m., his hands still shaking, and his heart felt like it was going to burst out of his chest. He plopped himself onto a couch and turned on the television. His stomach growled, so he decided that it was time for another dinner. He tossed his shirt on the floor, popped in a frozen pizza, and proceeded to channel surf for the next hour. Finally, exhausted, he tore himself from the television and made his way to bed, idly thinking that maybe he should sign up for a gym this year. He's been saying that since the New Year's, and it's already March. But soon, soon he would do it. Just not this week. Maybe next month, or, or when the summer started, but definitely sometime before the year ended. <laughs> I got a release party May 4th at the NV Lounge, so Come party with me, I got cards. <laughs>